Hey guys, it's Ray here, and welcome to my first ever Halloween special. So as you guys know from my last art conspiracy theory video, I really love a good conspiracy. Kendall Ray, Shane Dawson, all time conspiracies, you name it, I'm probably subscribed to their channel and I watch all their videos. I just love me a good conspiracy. And since I'm an art channel, I thought we'd put two and two together for the second time and I would do Art Conspiracy Theories Part 2. So if you're not a fan about talking about murders or scary stuff or like conspiracies, this probably isn't the video for you. We're gonna start out on a high note and by the end it's gonna get pretty dark and pretty crazy. And you know the video is gonna be good because I have to put a warning in front of it. And after you watch this video, if you want to see part one to my art conspiracies, I'll link that down below so after you're done watching this, you can go check that out and you can get some more conspiracies. So today, without further ado, let's begin. So this first conspiracy blew my mind and that is the conspiracy that Vincent Van Gogh was colorblind. I feel like I don't even have to introduce who Vincent Van Gogh is. He was one of the most famous painters of all time. He is known for his amazing artwork and his groundbreaking use of color and brush strokes and texture. And just as a side note, before we get even deeper into this conspiracy, this does not take away from his genius by any way. If anything, him being colorblind enhances just how genius he was as a painter. So this all started when designer Kazunori Asada went into a room that had been specially lit so that a normal person could see what a colorblind person could see. And there are different types of colorblindness, but this room specifically focused on people who might not be able to see reds that well. So while they were in this room looking at the examples of what a colorblind person could see, there was a print of one of Vincent Van Gogh's artwork. And this really caught the designer's eye because it looked oddly correct. And a while later, Asada started color correcting a lot of the other paintings. And what do you know, once you color correct them, they all look like something a normal person would see. Now, for example, let's look at one of his paintings called Sunflowers. This is what the painting looks like normally. All the colors look pretty good except for the red. So to us non-colorblind people, a normal sunflower has a very brown middle, but in this painting, it's very red. So whenever you color correct it, it looks like a normal sunflower. And like I said, this isn't just like a one-time coincidence. This is with a lot of his paintings. Check it out. So it kind of makes you think, did Vincent Van Gogh know he was intentionally adding in these extra colors or was he doing it on an accident because he couldn't see? To be honest, I don't really care either way. In my eyes, he'll always be one of the best artists of all time. So the next conspiracy that I wanted to talk about is kind of like an update to my part one video. So in part one, I did a segment all about aliens in painting throughout history. And one of the most clear cut paintings is called the Madonna with Giovanni. Did you notice anything weird about that painting? We'll take a closer look. Yeah, that is really shocking. It looks like an actual little spaceship in the corner of this painting. And to make it even more suspicious, there's even like a guy looking up with his dog, directly looking up at this little thing flying in the sky. Well, after I had posted that video, I got all kinds of links sent to me and pictures sent to me of other pieces of artwork throughout history that have aliens in it. And to my surprise, there was a lot. Check it out. Yeah, I was blown away when I saw these. There's just so many. And these aren't hoaxes. These are actual real paintings and sculptures and artwork that you can actually go to museums and see, or you can Google it and see, look in history books and see. So it's kind of scary, but at the same time, it makes you think if aliens are real, they've been visiting Earth for a long time. All right, so this next conspiracy is pretty dark, so I'm just about to warn you this involves murder, mutilation, psychopaths, and all kinds of other creepy stuff. So I feel like most of you guys have at least heard of, if not know, the name Jack the Ripper. He is one of the most famous unsolved serial killers of all time. In a four month period, he killed five women. And he didn't just kill them, he would do things to their bodies afterwards. Now there are all kinds of conspiracies of who Jack the Ripper was. It's been over a century and nobody still has any idea who did it. 
So today we're going to focus on one suspect, and that is famous painter Walter Sickert. So if you guys aren't familiar with Walter Sickert, he was a famous painter actor around the late 1800s, early 1900s, and he kind of had the reputation of being kind of a weird guy. So this all started back in 2002 when a very rich and very famous uh, crime writer named Patricia Cornwell started doing a story based out in London. Well, while she was there, it kind of took a turn because she started getting really involved directly with the evidence for Jack the Ripper's case, or I guess I should say what's left of it. And she started noticing a lot of really interesting coincidences between Sickert and Jack the Ripper. So one of the very first things when you look for a serial killer is you kind of want to get their profile. Like what kind of a person would mutilate and do really disgusting things to a, a body to women. And so this is where the first coincidence of Walter Sickert first pops up. So to put this very clearly, Sickert had a deformity on his lower regions. And from a very young age, he had to get a lot of corrective surgery on his lower regions. And as you guys clearly know, surgery back then was nothing compared to what surgery is now, especially I would say if there's any one thing that pushed Walter Sickert over the edge, it is with the deformity he was born with, which is this fistula, which required three surgeries on this little boy. If Walter was a lucky little boy, his ordeal began by his feeling suffocated as his nose and mouth were covered with a chloroform-soaked rag that was guaranteed to make him violently nauseated later. If he was an unlucky little fellow, he was wide awake and experienced every horror happening to him. The nurse may have firmly held his legs in place while Dr. Cooper took a scalpel and cut along the fistula's entire track according to the hospital standard procedure. And as he grew up, due to these surgeries, he was never able to fully express himself or learn about himself. So very well could be that all of those traumatizing things that happened to Sickert could have led to some much dangerous mental problems later in his life. And I know that that theory alone doesn't link to anything, but trust me, it gets so much worse. So during the whole entire time of Jack the Ripper, there has been over 400 letters sent of people claiming to be Jack the Ripper to the police. But there were very few letters who seemed to be very authentic. Like for example, there was a letter sent with an actual human kidney, kidney believed to be from one of the victims. Or like there was letters that had too much knowledge about the crime, like very specific details about the crime. And there was even letters that contained blood on them. So out of all the letters, the ones that I just named are most likely to be from Jack the Ripper. So the very first potential clue that we get is based off of a watermark. So unlike today, it's not like you just go to Walmart and get a mass produced piece of paper. In London at the time, if you wanted some stationery, you would actually go down to a shop that makes it in store. And the paper makers would usually stamp on their company name onto these papers to claim like, hey, we made these papers. And it's kind of interesting because some of the official letters that Jack the Ripper might have sent, they have the exact same watermark and they're the exact same paper that Sickert used to use in his stationery. Dr. Ferrara returned to Virginia to continue more detailed comparisons between Ripper and Sickert letters, and there he found another clue. This letter is one of the more recently found uh, Jack the Ripper letters that we were particularly interested in. One of the things we noted was this partial watermark that you see here in the photo. When I was looking at Walter Sickert's correspondence. This particular letter of his, I saw that in fact there was a full watermark, the A. Peary and Sons. Now do they overlay each other? It fits. And another thing about Jack the Ripper is he actually spent a lot of time creating the letters. So for example, he'd always put drawings into his letters. And one that caught Patricia Cornwell's eye was this one of a guy smoking. If you look at it, you can definitely see there's a certain style to it, especially the hair. Then I received an unexpected phone call, one of those magic moments in a criminal investigation. 
A woman in Cornwall, in southern England, had heard I was working on the Ripper case, and she showed me a visitor's book from a guest house popular with artists at the end of the 19th century. The book was full of comments and drawings from the various guests over the years. What I found myself looking at, it literally sent a chill up my spine. I mean, my hair practically stood on end when I saw that Jack the Ripper signature. I mean, it was like an amazing moment. These drawings right here, I was wondering what you would make. These are photographs of pages from a Ripper letter. Yes. Called the Pearly King. See how the pipe has been drawn in this character's mouth? And this is from, quote, Jack the Ripper at the Public Records Office. Yes. And you look at these characters on this page. Again, I'm not the art person, but if you look, I was just wondering how you they would compare to this Ripper letter. They're very similar. The first thing that struck me was that these drawings were almost certainly by the same hand as the person that made the drawings in the Ripper letters in the public record office. Like, tell me that these two drawings do not look the exact same. Yeah, I can't really explain that one. Maybe it's just an insane coincidence that the real Jack the Ripper happened to be at the same vacation place as Sickert around the exact same time. I don't know. Now the last clue with the letters that we're going to talk about is a signature at the very bottom of one of the original letters. Now you'll notice that the signature originally says, signed Mr. Nobody, but it's crossed out and says Jack the Ripper right next to it. So if you remember from earlier, Sickert was actually an actor and he gave himself um, a bunch of stage names. And one of his most famous stage names was Mr. Nemo, which in Latin literally translates to Mr. Nobody. So the last key clues that we're going to talk about today are his paintings directly. And in his other paintings, you can see a lot of really creepy imagery that looks like a woman who's about to be murdered, honestly. Check it out. Now one painting that I want to talk about in particular is a painting that he painted that looks very, very similar to the crime scene of Jack the Ripper's victim. Now obviously I'm not going to show you guys the actual crime scene photos because they're horrific. You guys can easily google it or I'll link a documentary below that has more information about this case and it will show the, the actual photos. In one of the letters that Jack the Ripper sent to police, he actually said, I hope you guys enjoyed the pretty necklace that I gave her, referring to the, um, the cut that he left on her neck. And in one of Sicker's paintings, he actually painted almost to a T what looks like the crime scene of one of Jack the Ripper's victims that he gave the pretty necklace to. The pose looks so incredibly similar to the actual way that he left the body. And one really creepy thing that you'll notice is that usually Sickert painted like more improvish women who didn't really have a lot of nice clothes. But in this painting in particular, you'll notice that there's something on her neck. And what is that? A pretty necklace. Yeah, like what is that? And then to top it all off, if all of this just wasn't creepy enough, he then proceeds to paint a painting literally called Jack the Ripper's Bedroom. Like that's a really, really strange, very specific thing to paint when talking about Jack the Ripper, his bedroom. Like how do you know what his bedroom looks like? I don't know guys, all of this is just too much. Now, do I think that he was the actual Jack the Ripper killer? I don't know. I don't think that there's any definitive clue that says yes, he was. I think too much time has passed and I don't think that we will ever know who the true Jack the Ripper was. Anyway guys, that's all the conspiracies I have for you today. If you would like to check out part one, it'll be in the description box below, as well as in the card above. I really enjoy making these, so if you want a part three, please let me know. And also, if you guys want to check out everything that I've ever painted or drawn, you guys can check out my Instagram here. And of course, for like behind the scenes stuff, you guys can check out my Snapchat and Twitter too. And with that being said, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have a happy Halloween, and I will see you next video.